if your thoughts get the best of you, if negative thoughts, um, doubting yourself, imposter syndrome, all of that tends to be something that you are constantly struggling with and you're not really sure why. In today's episode, I'm going to share with you a different perspective on a benefit of the gift that Jesus gave us through his death and resurrection. So it might be something you haven't heard of or haven't thought of. And I would love for you to stick around and see how this actually has applications for your life now and not just your salvation for all eternity, which of course is important. But this is how what Jesus did, how it can impact you today and how it can actually change the way you are living, thinking about yourself and set you free from all of those negative thoughts that come at you. If you're feeling God call you to pivot life as you know it by leaving your career plans to start an online business and you're terrified of how you'd ever actually pull that off, then you're a mama with a calling and this is the podcast for you. Here's where we'll talk about everything from choosing the right business and running it as a mom to biblical inspiration and motivation to conquer your fears. Because even though it's causing you some anxiety, you're also excited because you know God's calling you to it. And that means you're headed to a life with more joy, fulfillment, and purpose like you've always wanted. Hi, I'm Alexia Carrillo, fellow Mama with the Calling, and I'm passionate about helping other moms like you step into their calling and not stay stuck in their career for fear of going against the grain. I believe it's okay to pivot and follow God's calling on your life without the guilt or shame for not doing what the world says you should do. This is the Mama with the Calling podcast where we'll figure out how you can actually make this wild calling on your life become a reality. Let's grab some coffee and dive in. Hey there, and welcome back to the Mama with a Calling podcast. This is Alexia. As I get ready to head out of town, um, I decided that I wanted to hop on here and do a quick podcast episode because today is Good Friday, and with Easter coming up, I always think about, of course, the gift of the resurrection and what Jesus did for us, but last year, I had a particular um, like revelation around what it really meant for Jesus to to do this. And it really affected how I was tackling a lot of the negative thinking that I was having around myself and my ability to be a good mom and around business and all the things. And it really is something that I have turned to again and again and again, and asked God to really keep showing me how to um, keep this perspective when I find myself kind of spiraling in negative thoughts, like a lot of us do, um, just as in general, but especially with business and with, you know, trying to pursue our calling, but then also life happens and, you know, we might lose loved ones and all these things happen, all these things come up and it's really easy to just get lost in all of the, the chaos of it all. So I wanted to share a little bit about the epiphany that I had, and maybe it will help you um, have the same kind of realization. Maybe you're doing the same thing that I was doing, and it will really just help help you have a new way of, of looking at what it really means. So basically, you know, I found myself last year, I've been working on myself, my, my mindset and stuff for, for years. And, um, but last year I went through a really, like a lot of transformation, um, a lot of work over my negative thoughts and actually doing that with a coach. And, um, it actually started around food and things, but as with everything that happens with our mindset, um, the things that I was learning about myself, around why, like what I thought about myself and the things that I obviously, the, the lies I was believing, all this kind of stuff around food were really just deeply ingrained in me to where they permeated my life. So yes, I was kind of tackling it from the health perspective, but I was just blown away over and over again by how these things clearly affect everything that I do, including my business or more so the the way I show up or don't show up, the way I, you know, imp- imposter syndrome comes about or, um, 
like just doubting myself or having all of these um, negative thoughts around my abilities or whatever. So those negative thoughts were deeply entrenched in this. So as I was doing the hard, like emotional and mental work around this, um, we came to Easter. So I started that around January of last year. And then we got to Easter. And as I was, you know, reflecting on um, the resurrection of Jesus and what that ultimately meant, I was like, I had this, I feel like it was like a visual, a vision or something, but it was just like this picture that came to mind where it was like, I was choosing to live in bondage to lies. It's like I'm sitting in like a jail cell or something, but like, I imagine like way back, like a stone, I don't know, like in a movie, but like, it's like the door is open and the chains are gone, but I'm turned around like with my back to the door. And Jesus is like, I have set you free. And I was just like, whoa, like what? This is crazy. Because in a lot of ways, it's almost, it's, it came to me as like, Jesus did this. He, he, he sacrificed himself so that we could be free in a number of ways. And I'll go into that in a minute, but like, but yet it's, it's like, I was not denying it, but I wasn't taking full advantage of what that really meant. And so I went on this journey of, of trying to understand, like, what does that mean for me and studying the Bible and praying about it and things like that. And that's what I want to share with you today. So, you know, we know that the resurrection of Jesus, um, well, the death and resurrection, like the sacrifice, the ultimate sacrifice that he gave for us is for our salvation, right? And his resurrection, his overcoming death itself gives us the hope um, that we can do the same, that it saves us, right? Our salvation. And we can be with him in all eternity in heaven forevermore, right? And that's amazing. And a lot of times, though, um, you know, we think about, or at least for most of my life growing up, we hear about being saved as, as this thing that you will do almost like for when you die, but we have a whole life to live. So it's not like, yes, that is part of it. That is huge. That's, that's a big goal. Um, but there's more to it than that. It's like we, he saved us so we could live now. So we read the Bible from, you know, this side of the sacrifice that Jesus made. We know the rest of the story, as it were. We can look back at Jesus's words and see what he meant when he said that he would send a counselor, the Holy Spirit. It makes sense now that he would make his home with us and be with us always because he was the ultimate sacrifice. Like we understand, we, you know, we've studied that, learned it, or maybe you're just learning it more now, but we no longer need to live in a way that he is apart from us. Um, because he made the sacrifice, so now he can be with us. He took care of our sin, right? He he covered it. And no longer do we need to make sacrifices to be right with him. Like, this is amazing. And we now have the ability to have this personal relationship with the one true God, the creator of all things, the one who knows everything, what's best for us, what's not so good for us, what's not good for us. He can lead us and guide us, giving us direction in all areas of life. We don't have to hear from him through a prophet or a priest or um, anything like that. We get to talk to him every day, all day, if we want to, because of what Jesus did for us. And we can sometimes take this for granted because we've heard it. I mean, thousands of years, we, you know, we've known that this has been the truth and we've heard it in church and we've read it a bunch of times, but to really understand how amazing that is, I want to have us think a minute for what it meant back then to not have this happen. So to really understand how amazing it was that Jesus did this for us and what it means for us today, not just eternal lives, but like our lives right now. Let's think about what it was like before Jesus made that sacrifice, because before that, they didn't have the Holy Spirit. Everyone wasn't, didn't have that option. They had to do sacrifices to, in order to be right with God. As man, they didn't have any power at all over the enemy. And, you know, the enemy has been at work since the beginning, and he's been relentless. Like he does not want, he wants to turn every single one of God's children away from God, if he can help it. And 
In Matthew 9, 36, it says, When he, being Jesus, saw the crowds, he felt compassion for them because they were distressed and dejected like sheep without a shepherd. That verse stands out to me so much because the imagery there of of what that means to be a sheep without a shepherd and why are they distressed and dejected. Um, It just... We'll go into that in a minute, but like that imagery really just stuck with me when I read that verse. And then Jesus goes on then to then commission the 12 and give them authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to heal every disease and sickness. So it's like they are sheep that are distressed and dejected because they are being attacked by the enemy over and over and over. And Jesus is healing and healing, like trying to, you know, setting as many people free as he can, casting out spirits left and right. And then he commissions the 12 to do the same because without this sacrifice, they're just susceptible to that attack all the time. Like a sheep without a shepherd is a dangerous thing for that sheep. It's in a bad situation because it's helpless. Um, in John 10, 1 through 18, Jesus says that he is the good shepherd, willing to lay down his life for his sheep and protect them from the snares of the wolf. So again, thinking of ourselves as these sheep and that we are being attacked, but he laid down his life so that we no longer have to be attacked by the wolf. So before the sacrifice that he made, people were literally just completely susceptible to the attacks of the enemy. They're powerless to his attacks. I mean, they could resist and they could try to do their best and and all of that, but they really didn't have the power Um, because God is the power, right? But people didn't have it. And in Psalm 23, it's, you know, the, the Psalm of the Good Shepherd. So it's one that you've probably heard many times to the point where it might even be easy to lose sight of some of the amazing things that are in there and the imagery and what it really means for us. So, you know, it says the good shepherd is leading his sheep. He's providing for them, giving them green pastures, still waters, um, and he's protecting them. Sheep are pretty defenseless. I mean, they really, they like group together. They might run, but that's about it. They just, they need somebody to protect them. They need a shepherd to protect them from being attacked. And that's exactly what Jesus does for us. In verse four of Psalm 23, it says, even when I go through the darkest valley, or your your version might say the valley of death, um, I fear no danger for you are with me, your rod and staff, they comfort me. And that rod and staff is not for the sheep, not so he can like, beat the sheep or something. It's for the wolves and any attackers that even try to come near the shepherd's precious sheep. And because of his sacrifice, he has given the ultimate protection to us, his sheep. So in John 14, 12, he says, truly, I tell you, the one who believes in me will also do the works that I do. And he will do even greater works than these because I am going to the father. And taking all of this together, It just shows us that Jesus, because he went to the Father, he is giving us the power to overcome the enemy from within us um, through the Holy Spirit. So in Ephesians 6, we hear about this, the armor of God, and the Bible tells us about the spiritual battle we are in and how we can put on the whole armor of God to stand against the schemes of the devil, the belt of truth, the chest plate of righteousness, sandals of peace the shield of faith, and the helmet of salvation. And those are how we protect ourselves from the fiery arrows of the enemy that he's constantly trying to get at us. And these are the things that will try to take us down. And then we have our one weapon, which is the sword of the spirit. And we also should pray. Um, But the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it's interesting because the Greek word used here for word is the word rhema, R-H-E-M-A. And that actually means spoken word from a living person. So this is like the spirit actively speaking to you. Because you have the spirit actively speaking to you, you now have a defense. You have a weapon against the enemy. So all of this is to protect us from the enemy. We have, there's a spiritual battle going on. And now because of what Jesus did, we are empowered. We are empowered to do the good things in the world that God has given us to do. But We also are constantly in this battle. We need to protect ourselves. But like I said before, we were helpless. I mean, we, I mean, you know, we humans couldn't do it. And even still now, if you have not accepted Jesus 
as your personal Lord, Lord and Savior, then you too are just at the whims of these attacks because you have no power over that. You're just going to be tossed to and fro and just be, you know, the distressed and dejected sheep. But when you have, when you accept Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior, and we say that so quickly, but it's like your personal, like yours, Lord and Savior, like Lord, meaning you are submitted to him and Savior, meaning he saved you not only from hell permanently, but even still from the daily battle that we're in. And all of these things from the armor of God, they all require Jesus's sacrifice to make it happen because we couldn't put on the chest plate of righteousness. We can't, we couldn't really be righteous in our own, right? We had to have what Jesus did, having peace and faith and salvation, um, being able to even hear the spirit. Like we couldn't do those things. Most, you know, people that weren't anointed or prophets, et cetera, um, couldn't do that. So Jesus' sacrifice is more than simply, oh, one day we don't have to go to hell. We get to go to heaven. Like, yes, but it's so much more than that. And I want to, to just share that with you. Maybe you already know all that, and that's, that's great. But I'm sharing it because for me, what this had me realize is I was living, I forget the verse, mm, I think it's in Timothy, where Paul talks about, um, you know, being a slave of fear and just being a slave to like, yeah, just a fear. Like we don't have to be afraid. We don't have to be anxious anymore. We don't have to have all those thoughts, those thoughts from the enemy where we don't know what's going on, you know, cause now we have a hope. We have what Jesus gave us. We can believe that we can talk straight to the father. Just Jesus said, you can pray anything in my name and I will do it. And, and, it, and he even says like, you can pray to the father your, like, yourself. You don't have to pray to me first. And then I'll tell the father, like you get to tell him yourself. And that's just, that's just amazing. Um, so all of this is to protect us from the enemy, to empower us to do the good things in the world. And the unfortunate part though, is that most of us still live, even if we're saved, we live as though we don't have access to this armor, that we're still those dejected cheap, the, that whatever chains that the enemy were, was using to hold us back, um, whatever prison, you know, metaphorically that we were in and we're ashamed of whatever we've done or we're, you know, generational, uh, sins and strongholds and all of this, all these things that have weighed down on us, we are free. Like his, Jesus sacrificed himself so that we could be free. And so when we allow those chains to still hold us back and keep us down and act like we're still, um, you know, these, these prisoners to those things, we're living as though the chains haven't been broken. We're still going through life like those distressed and dejected sheep. It's like, the imagery I get there is like, uh, you know, wolves are constantly trying to get at the sheep and, and scatter them or kill them, still kill and destroy. Right. But the, the shepherd is like saying, uh, uh, these are mine back off. Except this little sheep is like, that's awesome. I'm going to run over here and stand by myself and then wonder where my shepherd is. And it's like, just turn around. He's right there. Like you're, you're invited, you know, you, you can be right here. You don't have to be over there, but you're just choosing to stand over there. Um, and, you know, we're enduring the attacks from the enemy and not realizing that we now have this armor. We don't have to take it. We're not bound by the mistakes we've made or held captive by any of the negative thoughts anymore, no matter how strong they might feel. And like I was saying before, it's like we're sitting there with the chain, like we're sitting there acting like the chains are holding us down, but they're gone. But we're, we're acting like we're still stuck. Uh, you may have heard that, um, the imagery of like the elephant who is taught like he's like a little rope, you know, is tied to like a little stump. And for so long, he thought he couldn't move. And then eventually they untie him, but he thinks he still can't move. So he just stays there. Um, it's the same kind of thing. So I'm not trying to give some theology lesson or go super deep into the salvation story per se, despite what it might sound like. But like I said, this was the biggest shift for me mentally and spiritually to realize that Jesus didn't just die for our sins so that we would ultimately be with him in heaven, but also so that we could live and live abundantly now. He said he is the way, the truth, truth and the life. So when things start feeling crazy in your life, motherhood is getting to you. You're doubting, like, am I even a good mom? Um, can I even do this? 
when your business feels overwhelmed, overwhelming, and it's like it's never going to work, or your finances start to stress you out, or you've got people complaining about something or whatever it is, and you find yourself panicking and striving to fix the issue, and we get into this spiral. All of those negative thoughts, all of that stuff coming at you is the enemy trying to get you to forget all about God, to not realize that you are actually free. You don't have to do any of that. And you can actually take comfort in what Jesus did for you. You've been empowered to overcome every negative thought, break through every negative belief about yourself or what anybody else says about you. You're protected, provided for, and loved. So I just wanted to give three quick ways for you to do this practically. Like how do we actually, you know, implement this besides just knowing it? So when stress or overwhelm or doubt start to take over, remember these three truths. Number one, you are not alone. Despite what the enemy tries to get you to believe, you're not the only one that can't seem to get it together or that yells at your kids more than you'd like or that's not doing your business as much as you want or whatever. Even in the darkest valley, he is with you, leading, guiding, and protecting you. Number two, you've been empowered through the blood of Christ and now have the spirit. The whole armor of God is available to you. To you. you just have to put it on and having the Holy Spirit of, the, of God who knows all things and he is powerful over the enemy. He is in you. So you have no fear. There is no reason to ever be worried or fearful or anxious or any of that. If those thoughts are coming up, just remind yourself that no, I have the spirit of God and I have the whole armor of God available to me. And number three, you're cherished and loved. So he made the ultimate sacrifice so that you could be with him, not just later, but now so that you could have life and live it abundantly. You have peace and joy available to you always. So seek him, ask him to show you how to, how to understand this, how to comprehend this. That's the benefit of what he did. We get to talk to him and experience that relationship during every single aspect of our lives. So the good times and the hard times through the mundane, you know, routine days and through the chaotic days and in our business and in our motherhood and in our marriage and all the things we don't have to just wander around wondering what we should do. He will speak to us and he speaks to us through his word and we're just, we're not alone. So as you go into this Easter weekend, I wanted to share this because like I said, it just really shifted things for me to realize that here Jesus had done this amazing love filled thing. Yet I was only understanding half of the, like, I feel like a quarter of it, but like half of what it really meant for me. I didn't have to live that way anymore. And it was almost like I was denying, not, not denying that he did it, but sort of like, it's like he gave me this giant gift and I only took like part of the gift. There's like a whole other side to what he did that I wasn't even accepting. So it was kind of like, not that he died for nothing, but for me, not understanding the fullness of what it meant, meant that I was only experiencing part of it. And to fully experience it is just, it's just amazing to set you free from all of those things. So I know that mindset is something I talk about a lot because it is a thing. I mean, it is hard to just live as people, but it is hard to start a business, run that business, have the courage to help people, to offer things for sale, to quit your job, to be home with your kids or, or not be home with your kids, to just be a mom. It takes a lot, like all of these things. We are constantly in that spiritual battle. Our mind, our thoughts, we have to take them captive, right? And, and really look at them and say, does this align with what God has said about me? So because of that, I just wanted to share this with you. It's just a huge part. And as we go into Easter here, I knew that it would be a great time to share it. So with that, I am going to go finished uh, getting ready so I can get on the road. And um, I hope that encourages you and inspires you. If this like, if you think this could help somebody else, please share this episode with somebody. That would be amazing just to help them see um, what what other part of this gift they might they might be missing. So I hope you guys have a great Easter weekend. And um, in the meantime, 
I'll see you next time. Keep pursuing your calling. Thanks for listening to the Mama with a Calling podcast. As always, you'll find the show notes for today's episode at mamawithacalling.com slash podcast. Really quick before you head out, are you loving these episodes? To make sure this podcast gets in the ears of as many mamas as possible, please head on over to Apple Podcasts and leave a review. And while you're there, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any future episodes. I'm going to be reading your reviews on the podcast, so I can't wait to hear from you. Also, if you know someone that needs to hear these episodes, grab a screenshot and share it on Instagram. And don't forget to tag me at Mama with a Calling so I can share it in my stories. Until next time, keep pursuing your calling.